So the next bit, the next section, the next series of images are um, the fun bit, the ooh bit, because I, we've seen those sets being made at the, at the workshop, and then they're brought into the studio, and they come in looking great, and then we make them look really great, because then we get all the set, the set dressers to get to work on them. And, uh, and anyone that's seen a Wallace and Gromit film, or seen the Pirates, will know that set dressing is what we do best. You, know, to, you take a... You take a set which has been made in a workshop, one six scale, you know, and in and in three weeks time you make it look as if it's been there for three hundred years. That's the thing. I don't mean you. you it's not just a question of making it look old. <coughs> That's part of it. But you, you give it history. Giving it history and therefore life is what we sort of love to do best. So I should now we can see some uh, clips, which simply celebrates the work of the. Um, the set dresser, the set builders, and set dressers. So Blood Blood Island is, is a big, big set. That's about, I think that was about thirty feet long from one end to the other. And it's full of detail that nobody in the world can possibly ever see. Listen, that theatre set unusually was built in the round. Just fantastic, just fantastic. Um, you know, and, and I always say, I, in fact, I said it in public recently, in, in a uh, mischievous manner, that, uh, that um, like at uh, Pixar, very, very brilliant company, and, and by the way, very, very good at self-promotion. And one of the things they do is you look at their website and you think, wow, that looks like a cool place to work. Yeah. What fun. Because wherever you look, there's people on scooters, you know, there's people with bars, you know, and like this, and, uh, you know, just being crazy everywhere. But this is because the job is so dull, you see. <laughs> because what they're doing is sitting in computers all day, really, you know, just... just fiddling with a mouse is what they're doing all day. Uh, whereas in our world, I, I put it to you, my lord, you know, it's just, it's just a fantastic atmosphere. You know, it's, it's, it's like a playground. It's glorious. You know, you, all these sets, they, they, not, they exist simultaneously. And, and as a, a visitor to the studio, you, you, it, it's dark and murky and, and it's wood, crack on wooden walls. And you pull aside a black drape. And inside of that drape, there's some glorious fabulous wonderland has been built and it's just a beautiful, beautiful environment. I was, oh, the, um, the theatre set, very unusual, was built in the round. You know, like, like most sets, you know, you look at pictures of film sets and there's always a wall missing, right? At least one wall missing where the, where the camera is. But this set was, was built 360 degrees. Um, Partly for fun, I think, actually, as much as anything else. <laughs> we, I just wanted to. And um, that's Laurie animating there. But we had a, a, a set visit from Brian Blessed. And, uh, and Brian Blessed is, is, is larger than life in every way. Uh, incredibly noisy. Incredible voice production. Um, uh, Quite offensive, you know. <laughs> you know he, he came in and gave a little speech at work, and you know, managed to you know, managed to insult you know half the, half the crew effortlessly. But 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 a great sport. And he came and he he came into this set, and it was actually terrifying because Laurie's uh, small and slim, and Brian is not, and he, and, he, and not not very mobile either. And he sort of rose up inside this set, and, and when he when he was in there. He filled here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more or less lifted the whole thing up on his shoulders when he, when he came in. Um, but, he couldn't, but it's well built, so he couldn't do it any harm. But, uh, but such a beautiful set, so lovely.
back to my comment on the the um, the craft. You know, you know, it's just it's a fantastic world to be around. These people that do that, the people that build these sets, you know, they're brilliant craftspeople. This makes me laugh. I mean, look at that. I mean, I mean, it's only ever seen it's it's only ever seen in quite a long shot, actually. You know, in in truth, at one stage there was going to be. Um, a, a little sequence tracking past closer up where, we'd, where we would have seen more detail um, but you know if I say to you that they, the, the model makers and the set dressers just love to do it and it's kind of true you know, it's, they, ca they can't be stopped you know it's, 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 that's, the, that's the fun of the whole thing hop along, hop along Hawking's uh, prosthetic limb shop which is, which is, every fake limb, just about, yeah, they've all got little jokes in them, you know, like one, one's a piano, made from a piano, you know, and, uh, and I, I don't know, but full of little jokes that, that no one can see because we love to do it and because, and because we can, and uh, we, we managed to get some of them into the end credits anyway. Okay, so that's um, the lovely sets. And now I'm going to talk a bit about the animators. How many here are stop frame animators? A fine haul. A fine haul. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so it's, this, is, then this is for those of you that aren't, perhaps. This is, this, is, this is Malcolm animating. That's what, he, that's what he's animating. It's on his, it's on his um, monitor there. Here he is touching the, the, moving the puppets. Going back to the monitor, moving the puppets, and then I'll just show you. I'll show you the shot that he was doing, which is this. <laughs> I, and th this is just for those of you that, that don't do it. This just gives just some sense of the way we now work. Um, when I was a lad. Um, we didn't, we didn't have these monitors when I was a boy. Um, the, the information was only recorded on film, in a film camera, like in the way that like Ray Harryhausen used to do it. That's how I started. Um, so it's animating blind. You animated, you animated all day, and all the information was stored in the film camera, and you didn't know till the next day or the day after if your efforts had worked, because you, because you couldn't see it. Whereas now, of course, you're recording it every frame uh, digitally and uh, that's why the animator now switches his attention between the puppets and the, on the monitor and um, I guess, I guess that, you know, that's, that's what his camera can see uh, down here he's got this is the um, he's got the lip sync and the uh, um, see the audio, see the audio there so you can check he's got the right mouth shapes to say the right things uh, and, and, and that's the way it works. And um, that's just a fact. It's just a fact of life that, that that twin focus between the puppet in front of him and the monitor, which shows him what the what the camera will see. And uh, and now I've got a, a, a compilation of people animating, where we'll see the same kind of thing, but just sort of um, in 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 the field. Let's see animators in, in the wild at work.
No, that was deliberately part, partly celebrating the, the physicalness of it all because it's a very, it's a very instinctive physical process. Um, there's lots of stop motion animators here, but for those that aren't, the thing about model animation is it's very, very instinctive. Um, nobody believes this. Uh, when you hear the story, if I say to you, if I say to you, oh, and they shoot two seconds a day, everyone says, oh my god, how terrible! You know, that's that's how awful. But um, it's not awful. It's perfectly normal. And um, that two seconds a day is quite like live performance. And civilians can't understand that this could possibly be so. But the, re the reason I maintain it is because when you start animating, if I can animate myself just doing, just doing that, okay, it's just a very, very simple gesture. So I, I start myself over, over here. Um, and when I start, I know what's in my mind, but I can't know exactly where I'm going to end up. Actually, that, actually with that gesture, I probably could. But it, it, was, it was a more complicated gesture, more three-dimensional gesture. I can't know exactly where I'm going to end up. So you start at the beginning and you work your way through to the end as in real life. You don't do what in other forms of animation, you do the start position, and then you do the end position, and then you do a middle position, and it didn't quite like that, oh change it a bit and oh, animate through, oh that's not quite right. They can they can adjust it. In, in, in computer animation you can you can refine and adjust and change what the, iterations. They call it iterations. You can do lots and lots of variations on the same thing. But in puppet animation you get basically one go at it. And that, to me, I think that gives it some of the texture and the feel of live performance, and also the fear of live performance, because the animator really, really doesn't want to get it wrong. It's a long shot, you know, a 10 second shot, when they get to the end, they're really sweating because they, they don't want to mess it up now, because if they mess it up now, they might have to go back and do it all over again. And I think that, I think that adrenaline, the fact that, like Doug here, they are you know, exerting themselves, they're, you know, they're, they're stretching, they're, it's, physical. it's physical and it's tangible, it's all about your hands. And so it's a very live, you know, dynamic, healthy, uh, organic process, which I, as you can sense, I love and which I, which I celebrate. So, um, we don't want to shoot anything twice, right? This is, about, this is, this is important because, because Two seconds a day. You don't. You really don't want to go for take two if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, um, if it's a short shot, two second shot. Well, it's not too bad. But as I say, if it's a ten second shot, you really don't want to go for two takes if you can possibly avoid it. So there's a huge natural pressure throughout the whole um, the whole business, the whole uh, enterprise to get it right once. Remember, these people aren't. They're not. Animating. I mean, they are animating. Of course, they're animating. But what? But more important than that, they're performing. That's what they're doing. They're, they're performing. The if it's if it's Hugh Grant talking, they are performing the lead in the movie. Their their job is to is to you know, for that the four second duration of that shot. They are center stage. They are the soloist. They they've got to get it right. And me as a director, my job, my task is to get them to do what I want. Uh, whilst using the best of their skills as well. And so what we often did was we rehearsed things on video. And um, on Chicken Run, we did it a little bit. But we hadn't quite got the, the idea yet. When I say re rehearse on video, as a director, I could tell the animator what I want from the scene. I could tell them over and over again until I'm blue in the face. But sometimes it's just easier to show them. So we got in the habit of doing these live action videos, which, which the animator was not encouraged to copy the live action. That's because that's dead. That's that's boring. That's rotoscoping. That's boring. But was encouraged to see to see what I was after. What's what's the gesture? What's the point of the shot? What are we, what moments are they trying to capture? That's what that was their job. So I'll show you some um, live action rehearsals now. I'll take that. Not uh, so fast, my friend. <laughs> but fire a king! Your pilot hat! I'm coat! Now pull yourself together, man. Ow! Now listen, Charles. 
We've all done something unforgivable. I've betrayed my pirate honor. You've betrayed science. There's not a moment to lose. We've got to find but that. It's hopeless. Where do we even start? Captain. This is our most unexpectedly heartwarming adventure ever. Well, if it isn't the pirate captain. Oh, ha-ha! Hello, Bellamy. Cutlass, peg leg. Didn't, didn't notice you come in. <laughs> the beard's looking great, my man. And I, I see that you're more wanted than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everybody, be nice. Give him a break. Bring it down a little bit. All right, seriously, Captain, how's the pirating business treating you? Yeah, yeah, brilliantly, brilliantly, thanks for asking. <laughs> Treasure coming out of my eyeballs. Take it up, washing my hair in 50 pound notes. Yeah. Those are some of the less embarrassing stuff that I showed you there. Some, some, especially the, the romantic scenes between the Captain and the Captain is very, very dodgy. Very dodgy. So yeah, we did that. And it was it's yeah, quite fun, quite fun to do, and, and 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 very helpful. And I think, as you can see, sometimes it's, sometimes it's followed, you know, very very precisely because it's all. I think time. I think timing is the hardest thing in animation. I think you know, land, landing a gesture at just the right moment in a piece of dialogue is the is the the hardest thing. And it's and sometimes it's quite easy. Uh, live, instinctive, it's natural to do it, you know, but rather hard to work it all out theoretically with a big piece of paper in front of you, so that's why I, we, we, like, we like doing that. Thank you for downloading this podcast from Birmingham City University. For more information, please go to itunes.bcu.ac.uk.